from zerohedge.com the biggest disconnect between prices and profits in stock market history from Tyler Durden of course everyone is talking about the massive disparity between stock prices and fundamentals right now to paraphrase Jeremy Grantham we now find ourselves in the top 1% percent of stock market valuations and the bottom one percent of economic outcomes based on the annualized rate of decline in second quarter gdp a popular way to demonstrate this gap is seen in the chart below which plots total equity values along with to total corporate profits at first glance cj if you would scroll down please it appears this is the biggest disconnect between prices and profits in at least 30 years. However, if we turn this into a price to earnings ratio, it becomes clear that the stock market bubble of 20 years ago actually takes the cake. So CJ, if you would scroll down to the next graph, you'll see this. But what a simple price to earnings ratio doesn't account for is the fact that the dot-com bubble appears so severe in the chart above largely because profit margins were relatively depressed at the time furthermore profit margins in recent years became extremely inflated this serves to make stock prices over the past few years look less expensive than they otherwise would so there are a lot of implications for this what this means historically right now but what I want to point out for a slightly bigger context that Zero Edge is giving you for you know their immediate audience of econ geeks is that this is a stock market that you know we we hear this as the casino effect. The stock market is a casino. Well, it's actually a way of creating overvaluation of assets based on their earnings in order to create that possibility of the casino effect. And to profit everybody who's able to get in on it, right? So they don't mind saying, "Look, if we corporatize this company, we make it a we have a we have a uh, you know an uh, IPO, an initial public offering, where the stock is let out." And and the we, I, the tradition of an IPO is that the value of a company goes way up. It creates a, a valuation of it. And a big part of how, you know, how do you look at this? When a company is first offered to the public, how does the general market properly assess the value of that company? And they go, okay, well, how much does it have in assets? How much does it have in revenue? How much does it have in revenue potential? And how much growth potential does it have? Like all of these kinds of bigger factors about the health of the company over the future time of it determine how much it's worth now. And so they distort that and blow that up. And these assets of these corporations, their stock itself relative to their earning potential is one way of tracking how overvalued they are relative to their real value as companies. And so seeing that disconnect take off now is one measure of what we've brought you in former stories like JP, uh, JP Morgan, uh, uh, CEO Jamie Dimon saying that, yes, it's the Fed's liquidity that is propping up the stock market right now when the stock market should be plummeting, right? A natural course of economic correction in a time of crisis, like we're experiencing with the forced unemployment crisis right now, would not be for the comfort for, for the economy to keep putting resources into propping up these companies. It would be for small investors to say, you know what? Mm, I don't want to be invested in these companies right now. I'm going to cash out so that I can take care of my family. That not happening is making the problem worse over time, is compounding this. So back to zeroedge.com, the story concludes, the last time we saw prices and earnings disconnect in such an extreme way, famously led to a lost decade for the stock market from 2000 to 2010. Is it unreasonable to think that the current extreme in valuations could lead to another lost decade, especially if profit margins are only beginning to revert to the historical mean. So a lost decade, you know, could be, I don't think it would be a lost decade at this point. It would be a new normal. It would be a, it would have to be connected 
to some significant economic reforms. And I, and I mean, people, you know, choosing to reallocate their resources instead of playing this game and, and playing into the stock market and, and realizing this, and this is, a, you know, a lot of it too is they're lulling people into lazy investing through mutual funds, through all these other mechanisms of pooling your resources and 401ks and IRAs. And it's like, oh no, but you're in the stock market. You're good. You're you're going to go up because you're invested. The stock market always goes up. No, if, if you're going, if you have money to invest, you have to be way more conscientious than this, or you're feeding into an exploitive system and you're leaving yourself vulnerable because it's not a lost decade. It's going to be a lost racket. If we see a major correction in the stock market, if this, this propping up of it that we're experiencing right now fails, the collapse in the modern era of the internet and the awareness that we have today and in the age of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and so many other things that we can do without this racket, it's not coming back the way it is. I, I think the, the stock market as a casino, as a racket, as, a, as an exploitation tool that feeds into corporatism and, and the Federal Reserve System, central banking and the government uh, racket as a whole, yeah, its days are numbered. Thank <laughs> you.